um, present as if there was an audience. So good afternoon and good morning to those of you who are here today to look at the ORCID EFT processing solution. A number of times we get asked by customers and prospects what the benefits of EFT processing really are. And it's a generic type solution for any customer who wants to streamline the payment and collection process within their business and also to tighten control over bank transfers by sending electronic files to their bank instead of mailing and receiving paper-based checks or receipts. So with EFT processing, there are a number of benefits based on the integration. As you can see, EFT processing integrates directly into the ACPAC Sage 300 menu structure, and that's because it's written in what we call the Software Development Kit, or SDK for short. And what that means to existing or prospective Sage 300 customers is that we utilize the services of the Common Services component in System Manager, so we validate transactions against the same fiscal calendar, we can utilize the multi-currency tables if you're making payments or receiving cash in currencies other than your home currency. We can also support optional fields and of course we integrate into bank services. We also integrate into the administrative services so this EFT solution is running in the same database as the core ACPAC Sage 300 modules and therefore it also uses the same data integrity as well as the dump and load facilities for creating backups of your data. And we also support the security groups. So if you're looking to restrict access to certain features within EFT processing, the same group profiles that you create for the standard modules can also be set up for EFT processing. And then once you've created that profile for a particular group, you can attach it to that group and any employees that are part of that group will have the restricted access. We also utilize for multi-user access the same LAN pack licenses that are utilized for the other core applications. So when you purchase the EFT processing module, there is no additional multi-user license fee. Based on the number of LAN pack users that you have within your existing Sage 300 system, you'll have the same number of users who can access the EFT processing module. So the primary purpose of creating an EFT product is to avoid the creation of paper-based checks. And based on the current research that we've done, there's about a billion dollars of check fraud every year in North America. And that's because people are either fraudulently modifying paper-based checks or through identity theft being able to uh, cash or receive money fraudulently. And this is not something that the banks like to talk about very often because they don't want to impair the integrity of the banking system. And in reality, when we talk about a billion dollars worth of check fraud, that is a big number, but it's really under 1% of the total transaction volume within a year in the banking system. So while on a percentage basis it's quite small, it still adds up to a fairly large dollar amount. And so the banks do encourage their commercial business customers to think about the use of EFT processing or at least positive pay in the case where they're transacting a couple of hundred checks every month. So when we think about EFT processing, uh, most people look at payment remittances as the preferred method of using EFT. An EFT really is just the creation of a file and then the ability to send a remittance notice to your vendors identifying the invoices that you've paid and the dollar amount that's been transferred. And so it's typical within a system to print off a remittance advice and we have a standard crystal form to uh, print off and mail that remittance advice to your vendors. But when you think about it, it doesn't really make sense to print off the EFT remittance advice and have to fold stuff and mail that remittance advice when you're sending payment to your vendors electronically. So one of the other key aspects of the system, as we've mentioned, is the integration. And with that integration, we're able to directly feed off of the AP vendor master file or the AR customer master file if you're receiving money electronically. Within the AFP vendor master file, you have on the processing page 
a delivery method option. And that defaults to mail. And the mail would uh, assume that you're printing off your checks, printing off your remittance advices, and mailing those to your vendors. But you also have options for email and contacts email. So in the case of email, the EFT processing system will pick up the email address on the address page. And in the case of contacts email, the EFT processing system can pick up the email address here on the contact page. So by utilizing a delivery method of contacts email or email, rather than printing the remittance advice, you would use delivery method based on the vendor customer. And rather than printing a crystal form that you have to mail, you can generate a PDF file and then attach that to an email message that we've identified as payments. And that is part of the setup here under email messages. You have the option within EFT processing to create direct debit or payment type emails where you can predefine the text within the body of the email and notice that there are variables for things like company contact, company name. There's also variables for invoice number, date and amount. So any of that type of information can be embedded as part of the body of the email. And then when you generate this payment process and then the payment, uh, the printing, sorry, of the uh, AP vendor remittance advice, we will generate an email, email and attach the uh, remittance form as a PDF to that email. And this is also set up as part of the options under email. And what we're doing here is we're sending directly to the server rather than through the Outlook client because when you use the Outlook client, you're forced to verify each of the individual recipients on the email. Whereas we use a standard mail transfer protocol or what's known as SMTP and go directly to the server so that we have the ability to send out these remittance advices electronically without any manual intervention. And then you can define a default advice for remittances as well as your direct debits for clients that you're um, taking cash receipt information or even AR refunds. Those are the three types of transactions that we support within EFT processing. So it's important to note that we do both AP payments as well as AR receipts and refunds in the same product as opposed to charging for additional products. One of the other key aspects of the EFT processing system is the bank file format. There are a number of different bank file formats that we have for banks in North America, Canada and the US, but this product is sold worldwide and so we have bank formats for countries all around the world supporting different currencies as well as different payment option types. So you'll see that we have uh, cross-border payments, we have wire payments, we do standard check payments, we also have credit card and PayPal options as well. And EFT processing, just to be clear, is not a payment gateway, but we do have the ability, once the payment has been approved, to send that electronically for clearing through the bank. So whether you're working just in the United States or whether you have vendors to pay around the world, we can create a bank file format as long as we get the specification from the financial institution telling us how to design the file format and the layout of the fields within that file. I mentioned as well that we do positive pay and positive pay is simply the option to send an electronic file to the bank but also still generate paper-based checks. So in this scenario you will still have to mail out your checks but when you send the positive pay file to the bank or financial institution, they will only clear the checks that are part of that positive pay file. So even if you have some vendors that don't want to be paid electronically, you can still get the benefits of an EFT system by using the positive pay format and being able to allow the bank to verify the checks that are being cleared. Uh, in the U.S., there's a particular uh, need for pre-note as well as the standard ACH, but be forewarned that many banks will tell their customers that their standard NACHA, North American ACH, 
but in fact most of the banks and financial institutions in North America develop their own derivative off the standard NACHA file format. And that's why you will see for some of these banks several different files. So you see here for Bank of America, we have a comprehensive payables, we have a NACHA, we have a positive pay, two different formats for positive pay. So it's not unusual for us to have to create multiple file formats for the same financial institution, either because of the different services that customers use or because of when they started the EFT processing with the bank. The banks are constantly adding new security features to their EFT files, so we are constantly adding new file formats into the EFT processing system. A couple of different setup options are available for both the AR customers receipts and AP vendor payments. So I'll just highlight the AP side because they're virtually identical for AR customers. The first of those options is the ability to create an EFT file across a range of batches rather than just creating one EFT file for each payment batch. Some people like to have one EFT file per batch so that there's a corresponding number of payment batches and EFT files, and other people prefer to batch up a number of payments across multiple batches in one EFT file. So you have that option to allow EFT file creation from a batch range, and that's what I'll show today. We also have an option to allow unposted batches to be part of an EFT payment file. And while this is generally not recommended, because as most of you would know, if you make a change to an unposted payment batch, there's no audit trail of that change. So it's always better to use a posted batch to generate your EFT payment files. And if a correction has to be made, then you would do a proper adjustment and reverse the payment so that there would be a full audit trail of that change. Another uh, option within the EFT processing is the ability to either create an EFT file off a combined payment batch, where we have both check and EFT vendors. So we tell the system to skip over any check vendors and continue with the creation of the EFT file for all EFT vendors. So that is possible within the system. However, we generally recommend that you try to isolate your EFT versus non-EFT vendors. And so when you're creating an EFT file, you're assuming that all vendors within that payment batch are EFT vendors. So if we do find a non-EFT vendor within that payment batch, we would want to display an error and stop the creation of that EFT file. And the way this is facilitated within the software is by using payment codes. So within each of the vendor master files, there's a payment code field on the processing page. And we recommend generating an EFT vendor payment code and using that as a way of identifying your EFT versus non-EFT vendors. And that helps to streamline the payment creation process as well. Because when you're creating payment entries, you can set criteria for payment codes to use. And the payment code can be defaulted as check, or you can change that to EFT. And so if you use a payment code, when you create a payment batch, you can use the payment code as one of the criteria. So in addition to specifying the bank and the currency, one of the criteria here would be payment code. And so this is a quick and easy way to identify all EFT vendors that you owe money to and therefore can create your payment batch for just EFT vendors by using this vendor selection range. The last option under EFT is the allow select payments. So if we're going to allow the creation of EFT files across a range of batches, then it makes sense to also allow selective payments from within a batch. So you're not forced to make a payment for every transaction within a batch or all of the batches that are selected. You can go in and select individual payments from within a batch across multiple batches. And so therefore, you're not also forced to make payments via EFT in some consecutive order. We can choose checks that were created last week and the end of this week and skip checks in between if we want to. And we also have this allow multiple banks for vendors. In some cases, you will have different remit to addresses for the same vendor. 
So this may also require multiple bank formats for the same vendor. So if we turn on allow multiple banks for vendors, we'll be able to attach more than one bank file format to the vendor or more than one bank information for account purposes. <clears throat> so let's take a look then at the setup of the vendors. Uh, when we've set up our EFT processing bank file format, then the vendor EFT setup will dynamically change based on the fields that are required as part of that EFT file. And the remit to address will allow us to support multiple remit to's for the same vendor for one bank, or as I mentioned, if we turn on the multiple banks, we would have the option to have multiple banks assigned to the same EFT vendor and possibly different remit to's. Some bank file formats will require a country code, Others will require a currency code. Uh, typically, there's an account number and name on these EFT files. And for those that are currently working with AP, there is an import function where you can import the banking details for each of these vendors. It's important that in order to generate an EFT file payment, that the status of that vendor be active and not just entered or inactive but you can switch the status to inactive if you're in dispute with one of your vendors and you don't want EFT payments made to them. The other thing in terms of setup is the bank itself. So we can pick up the banks that are part of bank services and then to that banking information we would add things like the financial institution ID and transit number, your account number, your customer number and name with that bank. And then we have file naming conventions that allow us to use the batch number from the payment batch if it's a payment or receipt batch if it's a receipt. We also can use a fixed name that allows us to embed in date, month, and year information to that file. And this is becoming more popular. There's also file sequence number, which allows you, based on the file format, to attach a file sequence that allows you to number your EFT files in a consecutive numbering sequence. So those are the different options that we have for creating the EFT file and then we would choose a file path to where that EFT file is stored and so it's important to note that when you generate the EFT file you're, you're creating a flat file that is stored somewhere on the network <clears throat> Excuse me, and then that file is going to be saved and transmitted to the bank through some um, modem or internet connection. So these files can be stored in a protected directory and then those files will be sent off to the bank and processed for payment purposes. And this is sometimes where we get questions about the security that uh, is set up around the EFT files. And so to start with um, the EFT files themselves are just flat files or text files with banking and payment information. So there's not a whole lot of security around the EFT files. So typically these EFT files must be protected through an environmental control such as checking the AP batch listing report with the EFT transaction details report and the same report that comes back from the bank. So you can do a three-way match with the uh, payment batch and then what we call the transfer details report which is a listing of all the vendor payments that have been sent out via EFT and so this report will identify vendor name and number uh, the date and time stamp the transaction type the bank that it's paid from the account whether it was successful and the dollar amount we also keep information on where that EFT file is stored on the network as well as the ACPAC username for who created the EFT payment file. So you can match the AP batch journal with the transfer details report and the report that you get back from the bank verifying that all three reports show the same vendor payments, dollar amounts. So you can have someone sign off on that. But it's also important to note that the banks themselves have a number of controls built into their processing of the EFT files. 
For instance, they will have control totals pertaining to the number of rows, the total value of debits, total value of credits. So they're checking these hash totals and making sure that nobody has tampered with the EFT file between the time it was created and the time that it's transmitted to the bank for processing. So while we can never say it's a 100% foolproof system, it does ensure 99% of the time that these files are valid. And um, all you need to do is try that a couple of times with your bank and you'll quickly learn that the banks are checking every character within the EFT file. And if even a period is not in the right place or a space is missing, they reject the file. But we also have some audit logs that you can generate reports on or that you can view within the system. So in addition to the transfer details, we are keeping a log of every EFT file that was created. Again, we use a date and a timestamp and a batch identifier to let you know what kind of transactions are within that EFT file. The batch number within Sage 300 ACPAC that uh, that payment was coming from. Who within our ACPAC team created the EFT file against which bank, the path and the file name and the dollar value of the transactions within that file. In addition to this, we keep a log of every vendor or customer that's been set up within EFT. So again, we have a date and a timestamp with the vendor information, their number, their name, and all of the relevant master file information, the ACPAC user who set them up, and what that information was. So for new vendors in the system, we would just see information in the new value field, for information that's been updated or adjusted, we would see information in the old value field and what it's been changed to in the new value field. And you can filter this based on range of customer vendor as well as date. So we do what we can to create security and controls around the setup and processing within EFT to make sure that not only do we streamline the process, but we safeguard it to make sure that only valid payments and receipts are being set up in the system and processed through to the accounting records. So ultimately, when it comes down to it, the EFT creation process is quite simple. We generate EFT files off of existing AP payment batches, receipt batches, or refund batches. And so all we're really doing in terms of a change in process is eliminating the need to print paper-based checks and take the same payment files from your AP system or receipt files from accounts receivable and using those to generate an electronic file. Now in the case where we have uh, optioned the ability to create an EFT file over a range of batches, I will demonstrate that and then we can choose, um, I'll just pick a quick bank file format here, we can also embed as part of the reference description information, check number, invoice number, or reference from the vendor master file. And because I've also allowed the ability to choose individual payments, I can go in and just make selective payments as to what should be part of the EFT file. And then we create the file, and at some point we would have that transmitted to the bank. Now, for good internal control purposes, you would generally want to segregate those duties and have one person create the EFT file and another person send that file to the bank. But depending on the size of your organization, you do what you can to try to create some internal controls around the process. And finally, the last part of EFT that we need to cover today is on the receipt side. Um, the EFT payment is very similar to the EFT receipt. And for those organizations that might have memberships or subscriptions that they deal with, they might have a number of invoices that they want to collect from. And rather than having to go in and manually create receipt entries within the AR module, you can come into EFT and create a receipt batch based on predefined criteria that you specify and also the types of documents that you want to include or exclude as part of the creation of that AR receipt batch. And then you can specify specific customers and specific documents that you want to exclude from the creation of the receipt batch. And so interestingly, what we found is that some of our customers have purchased the EFT module 
and they have no intention of using it to generate an EFT file. They simply use this receipt creation batch to generate their AR receipt batches automatically rather than having to manually go in and create the receipt entries. So even without the EFT electronic direct debit or payment on the AP side, some of our customers are utilizing the software to create their AR receipt batches without having to manually enter those. And of course you can go in and choose the bank and a payment code so again, the use of payment codes is a vital way to streamline and segregate different types of transactions that you want to create within the system. Okay, so at this point in time, we can take some questions about EFT processing as we've reviewed the integration to the AP and AR uh, master files for emailing purposes. We've looked at periodic processing for control and integrity of the information in the system the ability to transmit your remittance advices or direct debits through a print advice that's creating an EFT email with a PDF attachment so that you don't have to print stuff and fold that information. And then the options on setup to create the banking information and vendor or customer information for EFT payments and receipts and the option for email transmissions. So are there any questions about EFT processing?